Yes. Away yes. Critically acclaimed. Yes. She comes back and posts this absolutely Let's fucking go. Video. An interpretive dance video for an essay. It's so good. This is how you should apologize. Take a whole book off social media, but now I'm back. Hit it with the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse dance. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Oh, what is this? Let's go. We <laughs> some Star Wolf and Gallifrey in beverage in the Prime Duel. <laughs> Let's ride. Hey guys, it's Sienna Mae Gomez, and I'm gonna be telling you what goes on behind my most viral TikToks. This situation is absolutely insane, with accusations flying from both sides. I wanted to share what I went through. All I can say is that short. I was in love with him. These are the facts, and I'm a witness. And why is all of your evidence posted and quickly deleted? His friends are painting him as the victim, and he is the victim, but not of me. Ooh, a bombshell. Damn, the editing here is super intense. I feel like I'm about to watch an episode of Euphoria. I'm young, and obviously I will not always get it right the first time. Who doesn't love a good YouTube apology? I love YouTube apologies. I'm so sorry for anyone that's been hurt. And continuous lapse in my judgment. I'm not the first to say influencer apologies have become their own genre over the past couple years. I mean, how many multi-millionaires have we seen cry on camera at this point? It's hard to overlook the irony of David Dobrik turning Ellen apology out comments. Video? Wait, what? When did Ellen make an apology video? How many multi-millionaires have we seen cry on camera? What was she crying for? When was this? Oh, thank you for the five gift subs again, Russ, man. This isn't real? Oh. God damn it. Is there some gossip? At this point. It's hard to overlook the irony of David Dobrik turning off comments on a video titled Let's Talk. While some apologies may lead to an accidental admission of guilt, disclosing. others don't even contain the word sorry at all. Some are scripted, while others are very much not. You're f high. <laughs> You're f snorting a line of off a of bad my you know what I mean? If I actually like never, I never saw his apology video. I didn't know he had online, one. You get used to a pretty wide range of public statements, varying from sincere and tactful to, oh my god, what are the words coming out of your mouth right now? Actually, that just reminded me. Uh, Jenna Marbles, hey guys, she made an apology video and then quit YouTube or said she was. Did she actually do that? It's been like two years now. I guess so. Damn, she said, all right, I'm out then. What a play. <clears throat> the Ellen apology is real. Right, let me see. Which one? Is it this one? Issues new apology to staff as producers are fired. Oh, she also just uh, quit her show, right? So that's pretty fucking awesome, I guess. I stay grateful and I try to stay humble and I think that I pay attention to what is important some Kelly. and what is real. In recent months, her character has been called into question. Yeah, what yeah, none of us like Ellen, I get it. Uh, Where's her I'll apology? Ninja made you, Ellen, don't forget it. She said stand up for herself is that the brand is never told Fox and steps up and things better it's crew Wi-Fi or nooptable. But the difference of a person makes this wave of environment it Where is it? We'll see what happens with Ellen's show. But something tells us this storm isn't even close to being over for them. And there you have it, a look at the response from the Ellen producers about the accusations and how they've been accused of various wrongdoings on the show. What do you think about what appears to be going on behind the scenes? Man, I just got lied to. Man, I just got played. It's the first video result. It's this one. Oh boy, welcome to season 18 of the Ellen DeGeneres show. <laughs> Many people who help make this show what it is. 270 people. Who Whee! I am so grateful for. 
want to be the one hour a day that people can go to escape and laugh. Okay. Oh, my God. Uh, Jesus Christ. Is it this one? Now with Ellen DeGeneres with another emotional apology to her staff in a video conference call after allegations of her show being a toxic work environment made headlines. This as three top producers, all accused of sexual misconduct, are ousted from the show. Kaylee Hartung has the details. Good morning, okay. Kaylee. Well, looks like I'll never find that. I'm just assuming it's not real. I got to keep moving forward and learning and growing. You know, so many people don't teach you about how to live this lifestyle or how to be here in this position, but <laughs> I'm learning and I'm growing. It doesn't exactly take a PhD hey, in psychological studies to gauge who's actually Way sorry to be strong. and who's only sorry they got caught. As some only see their situation as more of a costly inconvenience than an opportunity to reflect inward and admit where they might have room to grow. But that also depends no, on I how serious their yet. crimes are. Someone accused of a literal back. crime probably won't have the best of luck defending themselves holding a tangible actual script in front of them to be fair it's less of a script and more of like a summer reading essay that one of his friends probably wrote for him on camera i guess nothing should surprise me anymore not even the worst interpretive dance i've ever seen as a response to yes. one of the biggest tiktok controversies in recent this is history. how you do apologies join me in documenting the timeline of disastrous pr choices of one of tiktok's once most promising entertainers this is the story of sienna Otter. i know that this is why god and the universe have given me this platform uh, i, I preach self-love but that takes time and now, more than ever, I feel proud of the person that I am. The one thing you should never apologize for is securing your internet with Surfshark VPN. Oh, nice. VPN. Clean segue. I tried making that smooth, I don't know. Surfshark no, VPN keeps your identity safe and secure Do the dance by encrypting again? I don't remember the dance. I just remember this part. between your device and the internet, ensuring your personal data that was stays part of protected apology from the threat of big companies and cyber criminals. In case you've been living under a rock for seven years, virtual private networks swap the real location of your device with a new one of your choosing, giving you the ability to virtually travel anywhere across the globe, dink. which is all just a long way of saying you get more shows on Netflix. Access and unblock content libraries and streaming services from other countries, all with the help of Surfshark's 3200 servers located in over 65 you still watching One Piece? Bypass no, I haven't watched censorship One Piece in a while. and liberate your internet by unblocking countless geo-restricted websites and secure your online data in the process. Protect your identity today when you click the link down below and enter code JOBBERY to get a whole 83% off your subscription, along with three extra months free. An incredible deal you don't want to miss. Massive Andrew thanks again to the gracious folks over at Surfshark VPN for sponsoring oh, this I video. I got it, Mac. I don't know if I want <laughs> no, to know. Yeah. Thanks for your subset. Yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I am the new face of Maybelline. You're huge. Yeah. That's fine. You can come. That's not cocky. It's a fact. The new Thank face you. of Maybelline. That's no joke. Sienna May Gomez is an 18 year old influencer with over 20 million followers spanning across nice. her YouTube channel, Instagram, and TikTok, where she once ranked among the top 100 biggest creators on the app. In just under eight months, Sienna built one of God, the this largest background music is slapping. TikTok, signed with a Hollywood talent agency, secured brand deals with a myriad of major companies, and was even set to star in a Netflix documentary focused on her friend group until a flood. Yeah, and you of wonder why Netflix is doing Shitty, huh? her fellow TikTok star and her once best friend. Bor
What weird questions to ask. Jesus Christ. Oh. Not unlike YouTube and Twitch, oh TikTok. Clock. How is the paparazzi like a real profession that still exists in the current century? Jesus Christ. That shit is so weird. So genuinely weird. And it's so outdated now, too, considering, like, all of these social media people and celebrities posted, like, all of their shit themselves. Like, their most embarrassing moments are moments that they are capturing and posting themselves. So the paparazzi are getting paid for actual nothingness. Just to take pictures of them holding coffee cups. Such a stupid and worthless job. Thanks for you some thick in the prime debt. The bits ghosts. Fosters a climate of celebrity idolization, where fans are constantly fixating on the personal lives of their favorite influencers. Take someone like Charlie D'Amelio and Lil Huddy, for example. Their relationship has always been made a focal point by those that follow them and the media alike, which is hardly a new concept. Publicizing the personal details of your life will naturally lead to more scrutiny by those who have nothing better to do, i.e. people like me. So it's important to be mindful when deciding what to blast online as you can only expect it to be picked apart and analyzed by anyone on the outside looking in. All we can do is work with whatever you choose to publicize, which ties into Sienna's relationship with Jack. Fans would get used to seeing the two vlogging, dancing together, overall just being friendly. I, I hate talking about this, but it's important groundwork for the rest of the story. Basically, for months, fans were led to believe these two were a couple, despite neither of them ever confirming nor denying their audience's suspicions. Are you guys dating? They would very openly Ugh. show PDA, but never outright clarified Jesus whether Christ. they were dating, reaping the benefits of a public hashtag couples goals relationship without that relationship actually needing to exist. As it was later revealed to be a clever front, it got to where so many people believed they were together, it became a huge part of their brand. But that also led to a lot of skepticism. As Sienna's so mad, relationship man. with her fans has always felt a little bit strained and inauthentic. At least going by the first taste of controversy she experienced in February 2021 I'm young and I'm still navigating the world and this industry and obviously I will not always get it right the first time I care deeply about inclusivity and I strive to lead by example that means listening Boo, bad apology, didn't even dance. million followers when she decided to launch her own merch by the name of Confidence is Cute, a body positive Ugh. clothing line offering an assortment of tees, oh, sweatpants, cheesy. hoodies, and beanies with phrases like, everybody is beautiful, stop looking at my roles, graphic design is my passion. I'm, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be nice. Definitely a good message, just not the best design in my opinion. Though they were pretty well received by her audience, up until a new He's selection a dropped. Sporting the caption, Did You Eat Today? Uh, which was mocked wild across changes, Twitter Russ, and TikTok for making light of those with eating disorders and food sensitivities. It didn't take long for Sienna to respond on Instagram, where she doubled down on the design, writing, It was not meant to make fun of, slash glorify EDs, slash be harmful or ironic in any way. The question is hoping to encourage, slash check in with people if they actually ate. Not liking this design is different than misrepresenting the meaning behind it, as she continued. Of course, since no retraction of the merch had been made, people weren't having it. And as the situation began being picked up by the appropriate news and drama outlets, Sienna finally removed the product and issued a public Ooh, apology. Hungry. With that said, I have heard you and I have removed the merch. I will still be donating all of the proceeds of this line to Teen Line, um, which is a place that many teens can reach out for help. I care about you and thank you for speaking up. Be nice uh, you're to welcome. today. We're all struggling with something. Now, I'm not here to question Sienna's true intentions behind an ill-advised merch drop from a year ago. I don't think it would have been beneficial to Sienna's bottom line to ironically poke fun at eating disorders after building a platform on body positivity and acceptance. To me, what stands out the most in light of her recent allegations is the way in which she responded to the backlash. After a failed attempt to double down on the I face of say. her critics, Sienna capitulated with a strongly scripted apology possibly written by a 
theme with a heavy emphasis on her age and inexperience. Like, come on, you, you did not write that. Sienna attributes this mistake to her youngness, which might be fair in this one instance, though I think you'll see a little later this defense can only go so far. Unfortunately, there are some parallels between this response and her various responses to Jack Wright, which we will get into in a little bit. To me, it just screams inauthentic, but it doesn't really matter what I or any of us think anymore because this happened last year, hardly making an impact on her following whatsoever. A few T channels covered it, but ultimately everyone moved on soon afterwards. So with this PR shrimp? win, I have to assume Sienna must have felt a new air of confidence. After all, it was around this time that Netflix was filming for a hype house documentary. Yeah. Chaos surrounding the just, hold on, I'm curious. How many TikToker shows does Netflix have? Let me see. I'm curious. Let's see. They have to have like five or six, right? So the Hype House documentary. They have the Hype House competition show on Netflix. Or I guess it's not the Hype House uh, per se, but something like it. Hi okay, can someone just tell me? I don't even know what I'd search for. Thanks to the resub. Fair go. They definitely have like three or four, right? <clears throat> There's only like two? No, that can't be right. They had the Addison Ray one, they have the Sight Pass one, they had that competition one where a bunch of TikTokers got into a house to fight for like like Big Brother style. They had um Oh, they had another documentary on somebody and I'm blanking on their name. Was it D'Amelio Family Show on Netflix? Addison's was Snapchat. Oh, was it Snapchat? Uh oh. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe it was Snapchat. You're talking about he's all that, but it wasn't a doc. Okay, let me rephrase the question. How many shows on Netflix star TikTokers? There. That, that's more appropriate then. Because it's, it's definitely a lot. I, I've seen it a lot. I think they've been doing like a big investment in TikToker focused media for the built in audience. The D'Amelio family's on Hulu. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, maybe I'm just wrong. Maybe it's all over the place. Let's read some shakes. Huh. Alright. Maybe you guys are right. I thought it was more on Netflix, but yeah, it might just be everywhere. Is in the world as they try to navigate the Hollywood scene and drink bang energy. Though unfortunately, Sienna wouldn't be joining Charlie and Vinny Hacker on Netflix anytime soon. Neither would her Those acquaintance so Jack Wright. Thanks to a series of reputation defining allegations that changed the trajectory of her career starting in May of 2021. A post from a friend of Jack Wright actually came out about Sienna May and it involved a large amount of serious allegations. On the 31st, Mason Rizzo, a friend of Jack's since kindergarten, published the following statement to Twitter, reading, I struggle with seeing a girl praised after telling my best it's friend Prime to Roman. kill himself and assaulting him numerous times after he set boundaries and then repeatedly wonder why he doesn't like you back. She oh, also man. has a history of verbally abusing people. She's young. Come LA. on. She prioritizes the Give growth her of her platform rather than the positive message she represents herself as. Followers should not be an excuse to get away with abusive behavior. You guys all deserve to know the truth about her. Now, this may not have gotten so much attention so fast had it dog. not been retweeted by Jack's twin brother, adding, this is why I couldn't just let it go and stay out of it before retweeting Lisa another girl Jingle. alleging Sienna was also known to body shame despite the positive uplifting stance she had taken online. This was obviously incredibly noteworthy for anyone on the outside as these claims were being backed up by Jack's own brother who belonged to the same social circle as Sienna for the past several years. This is years. so inconsequential to anything. A fire Bro, she sexually assaulted a guy. Of which Sienna fanned the flames with her own but apparently a lot of other shit. What are you talking about? How is that made, inconsequential? Taken to Instagram by writing... Friends fight and relationships sometimes change, but allegations of a criminal act are not to be thrown around loosely, making it untrue. 
sexual assault claim is never okay. I'm beyond saddened by this situation. In order for us all to move forward, I will be taking this offline with Jack. Thank you to all who have reached out with love and concern. As you can imagine, hey, this no wasn't worries, received Sienna. as well as she may have hoped and was deleted soon after. In fact, you won't find any of these posts now if they've all been taken down. Amazing clarifying that Sienna and Jack's families had come to the agreement that this would be settled offline and away from social media. Except we both know how the internet works. This was out in the open for good. By early June, Sienna had made what would become her first of many public responses on camera, in which she unequivocally denied any and all allegations. Yeah, these apologies suck. Her video Jack. dancing Jack was much better. Or denied it, her dancing which apology. Makes the situation even worse because he never denied it, knowing that is not true. The allegations were made in a tweet by Mason of sexual assault. Let me be clear one more time: I did not sexually assault Jack Wright. Sienna goes well, on to say that she had never had sex, which was never a part of the allegations. But I, I digress. And even claims those in her life are using her best qualities, i.e., the way she loves people, against her to make her out to be something she is not. It's so crazy to me how once a relationship or a friend has ended people will turn your very best qualities against you which i know my very best qualities are the way i love and that love and that what? passion is newly regarded as overwhelming that that passion is now newly regarded as as possessive or desperate that is so frustrating to me and after everything that i did for him and after all the love that i gave him it i feel so stupid is that's the only way i can explain it i just feel stupid it's important to note that most of what she says oh, man. is completely unrelated from what Mason had alleged in his initial statement oh, man. instead using this opportunity as a way to clarify right, their missing. relationship off camera and even paint jack to be a manipulator as she claims it was real online and then it was sometimes real offline and sometimes it wasn't which was so misleading and honestly just such a mental mind for me. Smooth. during the latter half of the video sienna makes the shockingly bold assertion that although she did not abuse Jack, someone else did. I'm so disappointed in you and the people around you because they are letting you misplace your trauma onto me and I'm so sorry Maggie. that this happened to you. It's not my place to speak your story and I will not discuss this any further, but it's not your place to allow false allegations to be spread about me when we both know that I was not the one who did this to you. I was there for you through the aftermath and all those depressive yeah, nights. Spoiler alert, the night there was a video of it. Motivation, so. And I would go and I would clean yeah, unless it was deep fake CGI. I would be you as a good friend because I cared about yeah. you so much. I'm Thanks for so some soup. This happened to you. And I really hope you can get through this. Doesn't name any names on account of it being not her story to tell, but still condemns Jack for allowing his friends to spread false allegations at her expense. Before finally strikingly challenging Mason or anyone else to post the evidence of her abusing Jack, since she was so sure it didn't exist. And well, that's the part in. that really didn't age the best. Whatever evidence you think you have, either post it or send it to me and I'll post it because you have nothing. <laughs> that's so boring. Bold. <laughs> that's that's from so fucking bold. <laughs> On June 3rd of 2021, this short video taken in November was posted by another friend of Jack's, seemingly depicting Sienna straddling an unconscious Jack Wright, groping him and kissing him on the lips while looking passed out. The guy next to him who posted the video got up after feeling uncomfortable, but went back to pull Sienna off once he realized what was happening, posting this alongside the clip in an effort to further support the claim that Jack was in fact asleep, or at the very least incapable of consent during that time. Being definitive proof of assault in the eyes of some, this video remains a heavy point of contention today. Asiana has since made the claim many times over that he was not unconscious and completely consenting as it happened. It does seem like he was. Another statement not long That's after. That's usually what I look Jack like when I'm consenting. Would go on to dispute. The Hawaii incident happened where I was passed out unconscious almost like the whole night. She got on top of me, took advantage of me, groped me. I'm, I'm so glad they pulled her off of me, and honestly, I'm glad that they have evidence. Thanks, you After bulldog. Shannon found out about the video, she said sorry. She said if this got out, she would be done. That is horrible, and she's working The on Bill Cosby, Cosby classic. Was a of <laughs> True. Assault, but not by me. And I am a victim of continual... I bet if they had an earlier video, there was and pudding. And slander my name with false claims. It will not work. I'm here to clear things up and provide all sides of the story because I have been labeled as a sexual assaulter. Right out of the gate, Sienna's demeanor is potato. stronger and more aggressive than before. She comes off less concerned for her friend, who she just previously said was sexually abused, and more frustrated with how the situation has affected her. 
her, reiterating a desire to take things offline. I have tried multiple times to take this offline and I am continually undermined by Jack and his inner circle. Jack has not spoken on the situation and his friends keep dropping cryptic and non-specific information. Potato in the Using large. Jack's silence as a means to absolve her of the allegations made by his friends and outright accusing those closest to Jack, including his own twin, of twisting the narrative against her. Using air quotes when referencing the video in question. The initial tweets, as well as the video that I am talking about right now, have been taken down. She then goes on to dig up older clips of them being very touchy-feely with each other in the past, as if these would have anything to do with the allegations being made. Just because because he may have consented in these examples on camera absolutely does not mean he was even in a sober cocoa. enough state to consent in the video she's so willing to write off with air quotes. As you can see here and anywhere online, Jack and I were very touchy-feely with our friendship. This is the way that we interacted with each other and it is in any video you go watch of us. Please, and I encourage you to go watch my recent YouTube videos featuring Jack, God, our recent TikTok. This is so uncomfortable, holy shit. You will see shit. that this Jesus Christ. was normal. Online, we touched each other, kissed each other, we were playful. Jack kissed me, and I kissed him. Within the boundaries of our relationship, this was normal. Definitely <laughs> not doing much to sway people in her favor, but let's look. I would usually so, go over when he's unconscious was at the time and yank on his right. winky. So I went back and took It was part of our friendship. Not to mention when I got closer, I noticed her right hand inappropriately touching his crotch. She was shocked that I, I would play with his nutsack when he was having nightmares in order to, to ease his mind. The next day about the situation that happened at night. And then I'd spit on his face. That happens all the time. The way that Jack's friend narrated this video, I admit, looks so weird and looks just like real. But like my last video where I showed comments that were resurfacing and then provided a backstory, not everything is how you see on social media. Sienna attempts to defend herself by first going after the video's presentation, claiming it was edited maliciously to make it seem more nefarious than what it really was. The clip of me kissing Jack, he is also kissing me. I was looking at him face to face. He was kissing me back. Lachlan claims that he was unconscious. He said if he was unconscious, why did his arm move when you got up? And also, why was he kissing me back? She asserts that he was fully awake and kissing her back, pointing to the way Jack's arm moves when his friend gets up from the couch. Now, maybe Sienna isn't sure how gravity works, but I think it's pretty clear to me, at least, which I have to say so I don't get sued, that his arm only moved because the guy stood no, up. No, it's like weakened at Bernie's. He's he doesn't fine. Really that. It, He's yes, fucking it's fine. There's not a whole lot to He's go He's consenting. Come Sienna on. Is eager Come on. For herself. You claim in your video that you hear He said yes. Noises. So she could so finger his butthole. Noises and I peeked over my shoulder and it was exactly that. We were. We were kissing. Lachlan also claims that my hand is on Jack's crotch. While it is not, my hand is very visibly on Jack's Thigh. Upper thigh. <laughs> okay, one, it is not very visible at all. I'm not showing the clip uncensored because it makes me uncomfortable, but her hand is behind her leg, so it's kind of hard to tell whether it's on his crotch or his thigh. But regardless, touching him while he's unconscious is still Thanks bad. Prime and two, you can still make one kissing noises even if bone. the other person isn't actively kissing you back. It's clear as Sienna doesn't have the strongest defense team of her rebuttal is, well, this. If Jack was being sexually assaulted in this moment. James, why did you record it? James, you are Jack's twin brother. And I know that Whoa. if my brother saw me being taken advantage of, he would pick up the person on top of me and beat them. That's a not classic awful but defense. I mean, that would be a horrible look. They're trying to incriminate you, not themselves. To me, Jack's twin James took this Exhibits video for potato. his brother's own good. She then goes on to rapid fire a bunch of points that again really don't matter as far as what she's being accused of. This was also in November when we had first just started to kind of ease our way into relationship, not relationship, defined, and you were introducing me as your girl. Having your friend take a 10 second clip out of context of this entire night is not sexual assault. She's confused why all right, this is even an issue Fuck at it. all, since James Run and it. Jack had never brought it up to her privately. This would not age the finest either. In the wake of Jack's formal She's better than Amber Heard's lawyer, though. YouTube that's, channel about that's true. half a year later, where he argues he had brought this kind of behavior up with her multiple times. First of all, if they were so uncomfortable, why didn't they say anything to me? The next morning, where she was like, I'm so sorry. For doing that, that was, I, I don't know what went through my head. 
I had to clarify again that I didn't like her that way. We were just friends. She said sorry, that was it. After that, these type of things kept happening. This is also a TikTok that was made December 1st, not even 24 hours after the said sexual assault. Good morning. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that. Do you think Jack would what have made the this video was if he what felt was uncomfortable that? from the night before? The entire goal of this second statement is to make herself out to be the victim of Jack's friends intentionally manipulating the situation against her. But for what reason? As far as I'm concerned, no one really had anything to gain from this being public. These are the biggest influencers on TikTok, Ooh, Jesus Christ, all with Speed promising Razor. careers Even ahead. Making up subs, false man. allegations to smear Appreciate one of the most the popular members you, in their group would not be doing themselves any favors unless this is real. Sienna is issued cease and desist letters good regardless and it went on to take a month-long break from social media. The situation died down once again, at least before Sienna made her long away yes. critically acclaimed Yes. She comes back and posts this absolutely Let's fucking go. Video. An interpretive dance video for an essay. It's so good. This is how you should apologize. I off social media, but now I'm back. Hit him with the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse dance. <laughs> hey! Oh, what is this? Let's go. Deaf and stupid do you have to be to dance to a song where the lyrics talk about kissing a hundred guys when you have been accused of kissing your boyfriend when he was unconscious, which is assault. I've tried writing this part of the video so many times. The and interpretive just dance is so good. Still, am truly speechless. I decided to take a month off of social media due to the negativity surrounding my platform. It was honestly one of the most difficult times in my life for many reasons, but through struggle, I found clarity within myself. God, <laughs> apology videos are always amazing, but this one I still think is one of the best. I don't have anything to add. This Fucking is literally the epic. worst response to any controversy <laughs> I have ever seen. So good. Somehow, Sienna Mae's PR team figured that she did a friend, highly Angstis. stylized interpretive dance to a song which contains the lyrics, I did nothing wrong, I'm young, mm -hmm. would be an appropriate response to SA allegations. God, and it I was. You flying a wall during that meeting. It's like getting up in the middle of your trial and doing the Squidward dance. I mean, if you go to Google, Tony, God, right I wish. Now, a link to her video pops <laughs> up. For God's sake, she starts off with a close up shot of her push to start. Even if I can only inspire one person, I will have done what I was put on this earth to do. It's so shallow and doesn't even mention the There's reason she space. left social the media in the first place. The if she Excalibur. truly cared for Jack, like she keeps claiming, this video would at the very Here's least bone. mention him instead of only making it about her. Sienna lists silly TikTok dances and uh, showing unedited photos of true massacre as ways she inspires very Sia esque before launching into the worst dance moves a human being is capable of. <laughs> Needless to say, this video convinced didn't, everyone she was. Didn't Amber Turd just fire her whole PR team? Maybe there's a chance we see in trial her break out the interpretive dance like as a last ditch Hail Mary. I don't want this to be the last one. It can't it can't die here. I really think there's a lot of potential with the apology interpretive dances. So, fingers crossed. I, I really think we got a good chance there. Innocent. Netflix put her back on the show. She gained over 4 million followers overnight. And everyone clapped. The reception was just what you'd expect, which is why she deleted it almost immediately after it came out. Although I guess she forgot to take it down from Instagram. Regardless, it was still liked by over 200,000 people. And starting in July, Sienna went back to posting as normal. Mirko? Like nothing happened. In fact, she even continued to grow in popularity during this time too, getting more brand deals, probably because she thanked them in the apology video. And more than anything, I'm beyond thankful for my family, mm -hmm. friends, partnerships, and supporters. It's like she's banking on the support Hey, thanks, the Raid. side of her audience who doesn't know about the allegations, or at least not the full extent of them. Either these people had never gotten the full picture or didn't believe the allegations, clinging on to their favorite comfort creator and tuning out all the negativity. Because that's all it really was, right? An elaborate plot by Jack's friends to expose Sienna for something she thanks didn't so do liable. and sink her career out of frivolous spite. A warped reality Sienna peddled to her Link followers up morphs. until January 2022, up, when Jack Wright broke his silence. I wanted to share what I went through with Sienna and my side of the story. On the 20th of January this year, almost eight months since the allegations first came out, Jack Wright released his <laughs> own official video response addressing Sienna directly in a statement titled, What Sienna May Did to Me. This all started when my friend came out with a tweet 
Um, he's prime thunder. He was worried about me. He actually witnessed a bunch of times what Sienna did to me. Speaking on his experiences with Sienna, explaining how difficult it's been to open up, and that he didn't want his response video to be as aggressive as Sienna's, Jack also confirms here that they were always clearly just friends, and far from anything relationship-wise off-camera. I just want to clarify that we both knew that we were just friends. She was singing and talking They should about dance battle? True. And I... Is your subject I just thought of her as a good friend. We were making videos, we were making dance trends, we had fun. It was just strictly friends and we both knew that. But this is where I want to give a quick trigger warning. To anyone who may be put off by brief mentions of abuse, Jack does go a bit further into detail here and even makes some new allegations that hadn't been brought up by his friends. So feel free to skip to the time code on screen if you aren't comfortable with such mentions. So the first incident where Sienna crossed boundaries, it was after filming, we went to the room, um, I was just chilling on my phone on the bed and she got naked, like completely naked, nothing on, and straddled me when I was literally just chilling on the bed. But I didn't know what to do in like the situation because it was just, like random and weird. Quickly told her, Sienna, get off, we're just friends, stop. The next morning where she was like, I'm so sorry for doing that, that was, I, I don't know what went through my head. I had to clarify again that I didn't like her that way. We were just friends. She said sorry, that was it. But that wasn't the end of it. Jack alludes to these incidents persisting, leading up to the video we all saw. These type of things kept happening. She would do something and I would forgive her and she said it wouldn't happen again and we would go on and making fun videos. After all those type of things kept on happening the Hawaii incident happened. Jack can confirm that he was in fact passed out, unconscious, almost Oh, overnight. I can't believe and that. The that looks like a fully conscious man to me. Most vulnerable state. He's appreciative of his friends for stepping in and that they captured what little evidence there was. Because after that occurred, the two would get into another dispute at a party where she got jealous and mad that he was flirting with girls, even though he made it clear he wanted nothing romantic with her. She allegedly pulled him into a room, screamed at him, then tried to make out with him before he told her to leave. Two friends escorted her out of the party since she had also been causing additional problems that night, but resorted to jumping and rolling out of a moving vehicle to get back. Oh, I forgot Sienna, about that. He was part. hiding from Sienna in the house. According to him, her parents had to get That was like full blown, like Jason Statham stunts. Home, and while the car was moving, she jumped out of the car, rolled, and said, I have to get back to Jack. So I ran back to the house, and I was like hiding from her and I was just waiting for her parents to finally pick her up. Looking back now, I don't know why I stayed friends with her, stayed around her. I truly thought she was gonna change for some reason. I feel like she, she'd she say she has so much love for me and that she truly cared for me, and then the next night she would do something like that. It got to a point that Sienna was fully aware of Jack's boundaries yet continued Lucifer. to cross them, ranting to friends that Jack didn't like her back. Despite the fact that she turned around to pursue other guys, all of this is alleged, I have to say. But things get even more intense when Jack alleges Sienna would break into his house in the middle of the night. She would constantly come to my house, remember my- It's a good first speedrunning game, Mr. Krabs like, overdoses so on ketamine. Her, like get out of my house, cause I was so sick of her just like, breaking into my house. I would wake up and see her car just sitting outside at like two in the morning. She would break into my house and when I was sound asleep, she'd come into my room and I'd wake up to her hand in my pants. And it wasn't like the only time it happened too. I was so like used to it. I was so used to it that it, I don't know, it was, it was just like normal for me that I, like, I didn't think there was such like a problem at all. Like part of me wants to blame myself for being nice and sticking around after so many, so many times. But now I realize that I was stuck in this like manipulative cycle of her acting like she extremely cared about yeah, me. Yeah, she's like a and fucking super that villain. Night she would do stuff to Wanting me, and it was, to it was just Jack. so normal for me. I, I got used to it. Painting a horrific picture of waking up in the middle of How the night. How does all this happen before you raise a f red flag though? You've clearly not been around a ton of people. People you think are a friend you'll ignore a ton of flags for. It happens all the time, even if it's not romantic. I am holding in a PP really badly though, so I'm gonna go tinkle real quick and I'll be right back.
I'm back. Easy uh, resub OLAT. With Sienna in his room, her hand down his pants. Occurrences that were so frequent, he saw them as normal. There was one time he describes in which Sienna had broken in once again during the middle of the night and was kicked out of his room after touching his crotch area and attempting to make out with him. He finally locked her out of the room and fell asleep on the floor, in his own words. Same old, same old. I, I say, Sienna, stop. Sienna, stop. Go back to the couch. Sienna, stop. So I, like, locked the door. She was trying to get in, and I literally just... Slept on the floor. No, I've never speed ran so Max Payne. To bed. It's like very awkward the next morning, and she'll say sorry, and I'm like, Sienna, this this happens so many times. Like, you do not respect boundaries. You just. Oh my God. Her family even planning their own trip to Hawaii around the dates they knew Jack's family would be there at his father's beach house. When Sienna went back home before wow. Jack, he his didn't father's even want to go house. because he knew she'd find a way to be around him. To Jack, it felt like being a caught in A beach house in Hawaii, how much must Sienna that cost? Sienna always doing whatever she could to ignore boundaries and take advantage of him. This is the part where things went public, thanks to Mason's tweet. Once the allegations were out there, Jack dollars. was met with similar testimonies from guys who had it's allegedly it's had their own Appreciate it again, man. Sienna in LA. Thank Jack ended capital. his own testimony by razor. saying the following. We don't want her to hurt anybody else. We don't want anyone to go through that experience. I don't think I'll ever be the same person I was before Sienna. I don't know if she'll ever be sorry. I don't know if she'll ever learn from what she did or she'll ever admit to what she did. Um, did she ever admit to it? When I was peeing, I checked I if she still posts. She to doesn't. Do this to other people. Just days later, Sienna then put out another statement, definitely drafted by a legal team, which I will not be reading in full because it's just too long, but I want to give you the highlights. Unfortunately, Jack Wright continues his campaign to slander Sienna Mae Gomez with further false accusations. His latest falsehoods in a highly edited video show that once again, Jack is making a calculated action to hinder, hurt, and harm, and not only Sienna's reputation and life, Hood, but her as an individual human being as well. Sienna unequivocally denies these accusations, as written in the statement. Other than spreading falsehoods about Sienna online, Jack has taken no action. There has been no police investigation, not even a police report to our knowledge. No charges, no private lawsuit, and no contact between Sienna and Jack or their respective legal teams in many months. It was always Sienna's desire and intention to handle this privately versus in the court of public opinion, which I just have to say stop doesn't make sense because of the sheer amount of statements she's made but regardless she would never want to sensationalize or degrade the seriousness of the situation mm. sadly jack's blatant disregard for the truth has left us with no choice but to address these claims publicly they go on to deny his claims that she broke into his There's house and saying that jack and his collaborators have attempted to milk. utilize blatant slut shaming culture to justify oh, their wow. fictitious claims and have effectively victimize a successful woman of color in a way that regrettably we have seen many times before all in an effort to use her suffering as a catalyst for their own personal well, game they, they really tried to play everything final sentence with jack then coming out with his own counter response to sienna's response reiterating that every word in his video is still the truth and that he hopes she continues to get the help she needs so this never happens again from there, things went quiet on Sienna's end. She stopped being active for the first time since June, but Sienna wouldn't be gone forever. In fact, it wasn't long before she reared her head yet again, responding to the heavy claims on a bar stool podcast. You can't, what? Can't, can't make this up. On February 23rd, 2022, Sienna May returned to the public eye with an appearance on the BFFs podcast hosted by Dave Portnoy, the CEO oh, wow. of Barstool Sports, who you may remember is a proud investor of the infamous crypto coin SafeMoon, which turned out to be a worthless pyramid scheme. But hey, he SafeMooners. He threatened to fire and sue his employees on the spot for wanting to unionize. Or you may know his abundant legal history. Whatever the case <clears> may be, Dave Portnoy, alongside his co-hosts who are half his age, brought Sienna back on the <laughs> program after having her on just a yeah, year sounds prior. About right. I actually saw Dave Portnoy in real world once when we went to that god awful fucking Logan Paul Floyd Mayweather fight. Dave Portnoy was there and he was leaving the stadium and one person asked for a picture with him so he turned around and asked if anyone else wanted a picture with him and nobody said anything. That's the only experience I've had with Dave Portnoy. It was fucking awesome. <laughs> 
I like his pizza reviews, though. I don't know too much about the guy, but that situation was pretty awesome. Shit was great. For an episode that definitely aged well. In this episode, Sienna doesn't even appear until the 30 minute mark. Everything before that is just, uh, J. Cole, Travis Scott, Harriet Tubman. Let me get a, a replay. Replay. Hey, I don't Harriet see, I don't Tubman. even see. What's wrong with Harriet Tubman or Tubman? You said Harriet Tubman. <laughs> what's, what's the name? Tubman? Yes. Uh. Eventually, introduced alongside her lawyer and so called forensic expert, Sienna already starts on a bizarre note. As Dave is quick to point out at the beginning of the interview. I came in and I was like, Holy sh! Am I in the right Zoom room? Oh, yeah. Like, what, is, what is going on? So, is this your choice or their choice to be like, we want to be on the call with you? It's a little intimidating, I feel you, but no. I just, I want to talk about my emotional state and like, I feel like what I want to touch on is like how I'm doing and like, like the emotional questions that I know you guys are gonna ask. But as for like the legal and like the so what's going on questions, that's for them to answer because like. I don't want to, I'm, I'm trying to, I don't want to butcher anything. This is all like, now it's serious, you know, like social media. What a blunder. Okay, yeah. So just, Why would you go to an interview on something like this and bring lawyers? That just makes it look significantly worse. Hey, Charlie, you did something bad. Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. And I'm bringing an entire legal team too. Okay. Just <laughs> ignore the question altogether. Then. There has been absolutely nothing by way of an investigation or any kind of legal proceeding filed. Honestly, at the end of the day, this is all just a video online. Sienna is a wonderful, amazing, and very likable lawyer it comes out of the gate by clarifying at the beginning that there is no current legal proceeding going on. So it almost makes you wonder why there's even a lawyer present then. In fact, I do have to give props to Dave in this one instance for raising that very question. If there hasn't been a legal issue like why are you here she can't like there's nothing going on she could theoretically answer for herself because obviously there have been allegations made after oh. so long of just going back and forth online and it's all just social media talking back and forth it's time to actually bring in some professionals who are going to talk about what's really real they got a weird response it's not like she knows the situation any better than say jack would. so i'm not sure why she's even giving herself so much credibility when there source. isn't a legal proceeding happening to me it just feels like an yeah, intimidation so, tactic her. and as she said she does feel like it'll quiet people down do you think you bring in the lawyer team and everything do you think that's going to bring more attention to the situation or do you think that's to like kind of quiet people down or it's going to quiet well, people down. I, I think it is going to quiet people down because it's just like, I literally have my lawyer sitting right here next to me telling telling you guys and whoever's going to see this now that there's nothing being done. Like, I just what is that? kind of like, what? all right, I'm going to let my team like just talk about this one and kind of like. She has the one. worst PR team of all time. that told you to do the interpretive dance, Holy I, shit. I'm thinking you should probably be worried. Something interesting I noticed is when Sienna said this. What was your initial reaction to Jack? Like, did you reach out to him? What did you say? What was that conversation? There was nothing? So I actually, no, I haven't talked to him in literally since our last trip to Hawaii together. We, the last time I literally saw him was before I got on my flight and we haven't talked since. I cannot imagine why Sienna would not personally or privately reach out to Jack after the initial claims came out. Even before his statement, when it was just his friends making the claims, what could possibly compel Sienna, if she were truly innocent, to not reach out to Jack behind closed doors in an attempt to figure out what's going on? Our PR that team told her not sense to. to me. Sienna then goes Lawyers, on to weirdly you know, admit that she had hopes tape. of marrying Jack. When the two had never even gotten to the point of dating, he made it clear he did not want to be with her, and she still persisted according to what's been claimed. I like really, really loved him. And I was like, I'm gonna get married to this guy. Like, this is the one. Like, I was so stoked on him. He- Man, that is such weird behavior. That, bro, if this was a guy saying this, it, it would be much differently received. This is like actual incel shit. They were never even dating or anything at all. Talking about like marriage and shit. This is the one. He's a prime. Kizmo, Thebe, and Dermot. Yeah, that is like real stalkerish behavior right there. Because of like the views I, that it would get, and it would get a ton of views on my accounts too. I think we both kind of like saw that as a business transaction. I was what? personally between us like super into it, and he knew that I was, and I think he also knew that he wasn't. 
and that's where things got messy. Did you realize he wasn't into it and you were still pursuing it or you you Is it prime didn't cool realize? In we would kiss. Also, I just want to reiterate, we never had sex. We literally never did anything other than kiss. Tina likes to emphasize that the two had never had sex, as if this was ever something Jack claimed. And I'm surprised Sienna keeps harping on it, even with her lawyer sitting right next to her. She absolutely cannot, for some reason, answer Dave's question of, well, did you know he, he wasn't, wasn't into it? and you're still pursuing it. Instead, all of her answers are keeping the best interests of Sienna in mind. And how- Wait, she does she have two lawyers all of her here? Answers are Wait, is this is this one of the normal hosts on Portnoy's show? This doesn't seem like the company Dave Portnoy would keep. She brought two lawyers? <laughs> the fuck? Hey, can I get Saul Goodman over here and then, I don't know, someone else, please? I really need to make an impression. Are keeping the best interests of C. Oh my God, you're right. Wait, they are all, they they are in the same room, all of them. And you're still pursuing it. Instead, all of her answers are. Yeah, you're right. It's the same plants. I knew she was here because she reached out and patted her on the shoulder or whatever, slapped her in the face. God only knows. But yeah, I didn't realize this guy's in the same place too. Unless he has just been like deep faked in here. I mean, he does look kind of Pixar esque. Are keeping the best interests of Sienna in mind and how she was misled the entire time. Even though, from what she's describing, it doesn't sound to me like he had any intentions of pursuing a relationship outside of the romantic TikToks. It was interesting. Like, I, the, my initial reaction when I saw his long video is how cut up it was. It, it was like a jump cut every two seconds. But Brie brings up a good point. Like, why? Like, why would he be posting 17 minute YouTube videos, like, bawling his eyes out on the internet if? There was no truth behind what he was saying. Look, Correct. Here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to jump in again. Here's the thing. We can't speculate as to why he did it, why he did it, or what he thought about it. We can't speculate. But, you know, to Bree's point, they're nothing but statements. They're just statements. After not knowing why Jack would cry in front of 20 million people in order to falsely slander Sienna's name, we reach the climax Tyson of the interview, MGC. where Sienna's forensic specialist breaks down the infamous video and analyzes oh. it, basically writing everything off as too short to count as evidence in a court of law. The National Center for Audio and Video Forensics was retained to perform an analysis on a cell phone video posted to social media. I was asked if the video could be used as credible evidence oh of the accusations against Ms. Gomez. In short, no. The posted video is not credible evidence of these accusations. The video is not original. The video has been heavily altered. The video Based on what? no context to the events. Wait, how did- The video is not credible. Well, I think we need to clarify in these first two statements, this would be huge if you can prove the video has been heavily altered. You're telling me someone actually did CGI this shit in here? You're gonna need to, like, clarify here. That would blow this whole thing wide open. <laughs> the video doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Point five. The video is not real. In fact, nothing's real. What is solipsism? of the accusations against Ms. Gomez. I feel like that was a bad CSI video. I mean, my instinct is people are going to be like, that's a guilty video. But it felt like a bad move. <laughs> Actually very funny. They shred this video in front of the guy who made it. But I have to say it's hard to deny the video is short and doesn't show the events leading up to and after what is taking place. An alleged assault. But this weird fiver looking at it isn't exactly helping her image. Going on to accuse someone out there, maybe even Jack, of botting her in addition to really emphasize how much hate she's been getting online since these allegations broke. Is With absolutely no care for in the Jack or the same horrible messages I have to assume he's been getting from her fans. It's something though that we've actually become kind of used to and we kind of shrug off and of course there's a lot of play on. But I do want to make the point, it, it's illegal. Are you insinuating oh. that Jack did it? The body? Good question. Yeah, we don't, we don't know if he did it yet. I have to say the one thing Sienna may actually be good at is digging her grave even deeper. Because throughout this entire video, she comes across as nothing but inauthentic and unnecessarily intimidating. It just isn't a good look. And even if we're going by the court of public opinion, one glance at the comment section would seem to indicate a loss on that front too. She says, the last thing I would ever want to do is breach someone's boundaries. And for that, I have become explicitly aware of the way I interact with others and will do better. I think she'll be more cautious going into the future because of this, but I still Really a bit because someone talked to you about their boundaries and you continued to break them. So it's not like, like boundaries had to come to your attention. Like you knew 
You just didn't do anything about it. Sienna's responses throughout this entire situation have not been helping her at all. In my mind, everything she's tried to do here has backfired. The fact of the matter is, there are two conflicting narratives. One is that Sienna has been falsely accused of assault by a man who manipulated and led her on by intentionally giving her mixed signals only to maliciously launch an attack on her reputation in the end, or that Sienna is not the person she claims so adamantly to be online. That her issues with boundaries far surpass the pairs? smaller extent to which she's described so fleetingly in interviews. That she repeatedly chose to take advantage of Jack Wright when he was at his most vulnerable, keeping him at arm's length no matter where they went due to her bizarre, ignorant, and selfish infatuation with a boy who clearly didn't reciprocate feelings. I personally believe the latter. After everything Jack has said and personally testified against, it's hard for me to look at this video as anything other than the truth, even if saying that could get me crucified by Sienna's legal team. However- I don't know, man. Her legal team doesn't seem that adept. This guy actually put together a uh, fucking CSGO montage to prove why the video is bad without any evidence. He just said four points. It's not original. It's heavily altered. Like, it, with nothing else there. It's kind of worthless. You're probably fine. By Sienna's legal team. However, the one truth that remains absolutely undisputed is that Sienna May has dug her own grave. Whether it be with weak video responses or complete weave. interpretive dance jazz. to the lyrics, I'm young and did nothing wrong, it doesn't matter how young and inexperienced Sienna was when she goes to such extreme lengths to keep Jack and her critics at bay as to not damage the precious reputation she's built on a mountain of lies and sick dance moves. God, their dance apology is so fucking good. I love it. I wish more people would do that. That was interesting. TikTok influencers, man. Yeah. That'll do it. The person who edited that dance was my hero. Oh, you talking about like the banjo kazooie sound effects? Yeah, that was pretty cool. To such extreme lengths to keep Jack and her critics at bay, as to not damage the precious reputation she's built on a mountain of lies and sick dance moves. God, their dance apology is so fucking good. I love it. I wish more people would do that. That was interesting. TikTok influencers, man. Yeah. That'll do it. The person who edited that dance was my hero. Oh, you talking about like the banjo kazooie sound effects? Yeah, that was pretty cool.